Trenton Speedway has a long history in auto racing and an interesting one in the world of NASCAR, but the track is one of the most unique that's ever been run in the series. Unfortunately, one new track came to the area and stole the NASCAR Touring Series the track worked so hard to obtain. Then, a controversy led to the track closing and being demolished in 1980. This is NASCAR's oddest track, Trenton Speedway. But before we get into the video, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to use my promo code NFJJ75 at the top link in the description to get a free sticker sheet with the purchase of the Daily Downforces NASCAR 75 magazine. Anyway, let's get right into the video. Back in the late 1800s, horse racing was popular in New Jersey as many dirt ovals littered the state. But in 1984, betting was criminalized in New Jersey, which led to many horse tracks becoming empty. Fans were not coming, and many competitors left the industry. But at the turn of the 20th century, automobile racing became much more popular. These former horse tracks were turned into automobile racetracks, bringing back fans to the stands. To capitalize off the newfound love of auto racing, something that didn't need gambling to make it appealing to fans, Trenton Speedway was built and ran its first race in 1900, 124 years ago. The track was located in Hamilton, New Jersey, just a few miles away from Trenton. It was one of the first purpose-built auto racing tracks in the state of New Jersey. After the initial competition in 1900, racing didn't return to the track until 1907. It then took another five years before auto racing became a regular at Trenton Speedway. At this point, the track was a half-mile dirt oval. Racing continued at the track until World War II. As efforts went into supporting the war, the racetrack halted operations. But in 1946, the track reopened. But it didn't continue operations as a half-mile. Instead, it was expanded into a mile-long dirt speedway. In my opinion, this was in an effort to attract a major touring series. Just a few years after being converted into a one-mile speedway, USAC Champ Cars hit the track. This ended up being a one-off event until the track was paved in 1957. The paving of the speedway would become controversial the next year in 1958 as Jimmy Reese would pass away after a horrible crash. On the last lap of the race, Jimmy touched the grass on the inside of the track, sending his vehicle straight to the outside wall, spiraling into the air and ejecting him from the car. Despite this tragedy, Trenton would become a staple of the Champ Car schedule, where it stayed for over 21 years. It would end up hosting 48 races, and then go on to host three kart races. This one-mile paved oval hosted four NASCAR Grand National events. The first race was in 1958, as the primarily southern sport tried to expand its footprint. But it only hosted three more races, until major changes happened for the track in 1969. Trenton Speedway was reconfigured in 1969 into a one and a half mile oval featuring a dogleg. This dogleg on the backstretch counted as a turn, being one of the few five turn speedways in the nation. The dogleg also enabled the track to coin the nickname Kidney Bean. Essentially, it was a small right hander that made the entry to turns four and five of the racetrack much more challenging. This differentiated itself from every other track on the NASCAR schedule and from any track in the country. Fans initially loved this track more than ever. In 1968, before the reconfiguration, the attendance for the NASCAR Grand National Race was just over 16,000. In 1970, after the reconfiguration, the attendance was over 21,000. Unfortunately, as the years went on, attendance started to dwindle. Interestingly, the track was supposed to be a conventional one and a half mile oval, close to the old Atlanta layout if I had to guess. But when an elderly woman refused to sell her property on the backstretch, the dogleg was born. The right-hander went around the woman's property. The Grand National Series would run four races on the new configuration, the last being in 1972. There was a date for Trenton on the 1973 schedule, but then it was rained out. The race was rescheduled to a couple of months later, then was cancelled due to the race promoter citing insufficient time to re-promote the race. Also, the 1973 Northern 300 is actually the last time NASCAR has cancelled a cup race. 
Other races have been postponed, but not completely cancelled. Unfortunately, there was not enough fan demand in the Northeast at the time, or enough room on the shortened Winston Cup schedule. So NASCAR made the switch over to the newer, longer, and more up-to-date Pocono Raceway in 1974. In fact, a race at Trenton was on the schedule before the 1974 season, until it was replaced by Pocono right before the season started. Ironically, Pocono Raceway's first turn was actually modeled after turns 4 and 5 of Trenton Speedway, and Pocono would be the track that stole its date on the Cup Series schedule. Before we dive into some of the NASCAR races, let's take a look at some of the Champ Car races. The king of Trenton Speedway was AJ Foyt, who found victory lane there 12 times. This included 5 in a row between 1962 and 1963. Most of his 12 wins were on the 1 mile oval. The series ran 21 races on the 1.5 mile configuration. Mario Andretti won the first and last race on the configuration, winning a total of 4 times. Bobby Unzer won 6 times on the 1.5 mile configuration, 4 times in Champ Car and twice in Kart. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Also, the scenes that you're watching right now are just incredible. In addition to the 8 grand national races held, the track hosted 3 late model sportsman races between 1951 and 1975. And this is the same series as the modern day Xfinity series. The track hosted 20 NASCAR modified national championship races, including annual races from 1963 until the track closed in 1980. Jeffrey Bodine won four races in the series at the track, and the race of champions held at the raceway in 1972. On the Grand National side of things, Fireball Roberts won the first race by a margin of two laps. Interestingly, this was the only Northern 500. The rest were 300 miles or less. So yes, the drivers raced 500 miles on a one-mile track. So imagine a 500-lap race at a slower Dover Speedway. The time of the race was 5 hours and 54 minutes. For reference, the 2022 Coca-Cola 600, which had 18 cautions and was 100 miles longer, only lasted 5 hours and 13 minutes, about 40 minutes fewer. Richard Petty won 3 of the 8 races, 1 on the 1 mile oval, and 2 on the 5 turn speedway. Tom Pistone collected his first career win at the track. Bobby Allison won the last race at Trenton in the Winston Cup Series in 1972. He also won the last race held at the track in the late model sportsman division in 1975. But unfortunately, the track closed down in late 1980. The last race at the track was the 1980 modified race, won by Jeffrey Bodine, which was rain shortened. It seemed like a lot of the last major events at the track were really affected by rain, and I wonder if this had anything to do with the track closing. According to a tweet by NASCAR Man on Twitter, the track owner passed away and his children fought over what to do with it. They tried to sell the track to Roger Penske, but it fell through. According to the Capital Sports Report, the former track is now occupied by Grounds for Sculpture, a UPS shipping facility, and Hamilton Lakes housing development. But that's it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.